Hi everyone, I'm Ross Hoffman. I run entertainment and sports business development for Twitter, specifically working with leagues, labels, networks, managers, and venues. So, very excited to see the future of live music in terms of sharing with people who are actually not at the venue and making the experience much more wide. So thanks for having me. I'm uh, Jason Kirk. I'm the VP of Distribution and Media at Ustream, and we are the leading live event video platform. We have uh, 50 million uniques and 100 million streams a month, and a lot of that's music. I was telling the guys backstage that 15% of our broadcasts this year have been music related, which is equated to about 1.4 million broadcasts so far this year. So. Music is a big part of what we do. It's everything from live chats with the artists to live concerts and live events like this because we're actually streaming live on Ustream now. You know, there was an interesting thing that we saw happen um, about a month ago. Kanye calls us up and he says, I'm in Korea, I'm going live in 10 minutes, peace. Hangs up. We're like, what? And basically, sure enough, he was in an airport hotel about to get on a flight and he just started going live and he was like, just totally dumbfounded by this. He couldn't believe the access people were, we have this thing called a social stream, which I think speaks to you know moving in the right direction to tying it all together where when you're watching the event live, you can uh, log in with your Twitter, your Facebook, your MySpace, or your instant messenger and send messages about what you're doing. And with each message, the link is attached to all your friends and your networks and it all drives you back into this one conversation. And not surprisingly, he was, it was right around the time where his new album was dropping and he was premiering his new video. And it was amazing to watch that as the social stream messages increased, the number of viewers increased and he got up on um, you know, the trending on Twitter in a, in a matter of minutes. And, and it's exciting to see that. I mean, I, was, I sometimes struggle between, should I watch him? Should I watch the social stream? That kind of interaction is really cool. And, and I think that we have more work to do, but I think it shows about when you can tie them all together effectively, a, a lot of good results and engagement happens. Uh, one of the examples at the Roxy is we have a program called Club Rocks, and it's a hundred people, a uh, hundred dollars for a card that gets you into every single show for one year, it gets you front of the line access, it gets you a 50% off on your drinks. It's really an amazing card, but we only put 100 of them on sale, and we put it on through Twitter. And it, I was actually trying to make some money, and that was my, my goal. But what happened was, is this group of 100 people became this special group at the club, and they would literally tweet out that they were going, that they were there, that it was during the show. So we made this little mini community of people who were just casual users into our spokespeople, uh, about, and it was always a positive experience because the card was, had so much value to it. So I guess that goes back to what you were saying, is the product has to be great. Um, but if it is, you can really turn those people into you know, cheerleaders, I guess. Also, if you have a freemium model and you get them in there, eventually you'll serve up something they like, right? So I serve up new music every week, and kids might not, you might not convert into a sale, but eventually I'll serve up something that they love, and they could, and like I serve up if I feature a band next week, and you know, a certain percentage of those kids would download it, they like it, they play it, and certain band associates would end up going to your side and potentially buying a ticket and merchandise, right? So.